Hello, I'm back home now after a couple of weeks away and I had a couple of craft items which I wanted to show you that have arrived. The first thing then is this paintbrush set from Fumui. I've no idea how I'm actually supposed to pronounce that. They asked if I'd like to try out some of their paintbrushes for free and I was happy to give them a go. I'll do a proper review video separately on them, but I'll just give them a quick try out now. Come in a nice faux leather case. So they are, unlike most travel brushes, they've got a screw to undo them and then fit them in again. A couple of bent bristles there. I don't know very much about the company or the set, so I'll do more research before I do a full video on them. My first impressions are that they're quite pleasant to use. And I also like having the different shape brushes. quite soft and they seem to hold a lot of water though I'm not sure the bristles are behaving quite as well as uh, say like Princeton Neptunes or silver black velvet bristles So that was a size eight round, and this is a size four round. I'm just playing with Roman Schmall's cap at Morton. So first impressions are that they're quite reasonable. And as I say, I'll do a full comparison review in a separate video. Then I've also been sent this lovely watercolour set from Paul Rubens. Again, I didn't pay for this, but I do like Paul Rubens products and I'm very happy to review them. I'll just take a quick look now. And again, we'll make a separate video for a more in-depth review on them. It's like a microfiber cloth, which is lovely. I'm not totally sure where this paint falls within their range of different quality paints. I don't think it's their fifth generation, which is their highest quality paint. Again, I'll find out more information for the full video on them. So these are aimed at being a flower set. So it looks like we've got an absolutely lovely range of reds and pinks, blues and greens. And I'm quite excited to try this set out. I like that there's no white or black. I'll just quickly try one of the paints out now, just to give a first impression. They really wet very nicely. Well, this one does at least. I 
There's a bit of granulation going on, so it's PB36. Oh, it's very promising. I look forward to swatching out the whole set. So that's the Artist's Transparent Watercolour, the flower colour matching set from Paul Rubens. And then one thing which I did purchase myself was this stencil. I really like maps. I've got quite a lot up in my home. And I spotted this one and just liked the grid pattern. So this is Marianne Design. Uh, Slimline City A4 mask stencil. So I've just pulled out some ink to try it out. I keep separate ink sponges in the bottom of each little ink cube. So I can just pick it up like that. I like that so much. I thought it would be fun to use with gel plate printing. And then last but not least, I've got this lovely box from Upcrate. I hadn't heard of this company before, but they contacted me and asked if I'd like to try out one of their subscription boxes. So they produce a monthly box full of art goodies on subscription, and they let me pick out one of their previous crates to try. So it comes in the post like this. There's this cute little keyhole cut out on the front. And it looks like there's an Upcrate community where it's got its own hashtag Upcrate Battle. I guess with people using supplies from each month's box. And this is how it arrives. Weird supplies inside, lol. <laughs> so there's a magazine which comes with each one. It goes through what supplies you get in each box. I really like that actually. It gives you the full range of the supplies which you get a taster of. So you get some kind of context for the material that you receive. and then ideas for artwork to do with the supplies that you've got. This is really nice actually, it's got a lot in it. So 66 pages. And then some lovely stickers, they're really nice quality. Kind of a matte plasticky finish almost. And then an art print. There's 
a voucher for 15% off everything in the shop. And then this looks like a nice watercolour. It's a nice thickness watercolour pad. A good number of pages in. And then that. So let's take a look at the other supplies. There are these lovely Talons Ecoline watercolour brush markers. And I've used these before and I really, really enjoy them. And then I'm quite excited to try these. I've not used Van Gogh watercolour paints before. And here I've got turquoise green, indigo, yellow ochre. I think this is a really interesting colour palette. I'm excited to play with it. I've also got a Pigma Micron archival pen. And it's waterproof ink. What width is it? Ooh, oh, that's a one. I've never used one this thick before. A 2B pencil. Then a Da Vinci brush. So it's a synthetic size six uh, square top. And then the last product, which I'm very interested to try out, is called Brush X, extinguishing solution for brush pen and ink. It says it removes non-permanent inks on paper, mixed media or watercolour papers are best suited. So that's going to be very fun to experiment with. When I was looking through the different boxes from Upcrate, which I could choose from, I was really torn because there were loads of really good boxes available and they all seem to include a good selection of well-known branded products. So I was pretty impressed. The boxes seem to include a good variety of materials that would introduce you well to new products and give you enough to play with with just the products from each box alone. And I think this is a really good example of that. I'm just going to have a swatch with these now and then I think I might have a go at like copying one of the illustrations in the book. I'm just doing my rough swatching on the back of watercolour paper at the moment. So yellow ochre. I just love the nibs on Ecoline pens. They're perfect for doing uh, brush lettering and stuff. So juicy. Let's see what the instructions are for using this. Brush X can be overpainted after drying. Intense colours require a second deletion process. Oh, so it's got a little brush in the lid. Let's try it on here. So it's picked up some of the colour on the brush. Whoops! My little brush has fallen out. That's a shame. I'd probably want to use one of my own brushes anyway though.
I'm just brushing some of the ink out with water into a thinner wash and seeing how the brush X works on the thinner wash. I suspect it will probably work a lot better. Though I also want to do a comparison with if I just did that with water, what the difference would be. Right, so I'm just putting water down now. Right, and I'll try the brush X on the thinner wash. And I'll do the same again on this side, just with water. So I'm not too sure about this stuff. It doesn't seem to be hugely more effective than water. Anyway, let's have a go with the paints. And just looking at the information on the Van Gogh watercolours now. So the tubes are 10 millilitres and we've got pigment information. Well, the turquoise green, for example, is PB15, PB29. And then the light fast rating is one for these two and two for the indigo. I don't know how their light fastness is tested though, but they seem all right. Then the Pigma Micron. It's a nice chunky one. And I've just sharpened up the pencil with no problems. And that's very pleasant to use. So slightly softer than an HB, nice 2B. That seems nice quality. So I think I'll have a go at following the little tutorial. But first of all, I'd like to do a kind of colour wheel with the three watercolours because I absolutely love what they've got with them here. I decided to do a kind of abstract pie chart colour wheel, which I'll speed through now.
So that's my version of the colour wheel using those three paints. And that was an absolutely lovely little exercise to do. The watercolour paper produces these kind of speckles throughout it. So it's not the most amazing watercolour paper, but it's still pleasant to use. I really liked using the Da Vinci brush. It had nice, reliable bristles. It doesn't hold a ton of water, which you'd expect from a synthetic brush, but I could get the level of accuracy I wanted with it. And next up, I loosely copy the artwork from the booklet. So I'll leave that there. I have to say that was thoroughly good fun. I really, really enjoyed being given some specific materials to use. And I thought the booklet was great and sparked some nice different ideas. So having a play with a colour wheel with a new suggestion of colours to work with. And then doing a totally different style of art than I'm used to. It was just really great to be able to switch off and relax and enjoy something new. I think the art boxes are a really good idea. Perhaps if you're getting back into art and you're not sure what mediums you want to play with, I think this would give you a good range of materials to try out. I'll put all the information in the description box below, along with a discount code. You can get 30% off your first box with it. The one product, the Brush X, was rather disappointing. It didn't do very much. But having a chance to play with the other materials I think they're absolutely great. I think the subscription is pretty good value. It's 24 euros a month. I'd say that the art materials are mainly pitched around the good student grade level. I think they're very well curated. You get a really good range of products in each box and they take away the guesswork of trying out new materials. Plus you get lots of information and inspiration in the really nice booklet that accompanies them. They introduce you to new styles and techniques. So I hope this was an interesting video. Whether I pay for the art materials myself or not, I always give my genuine reactions and opinions on them. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye!